hi friends welcome on board the new life program that we've been coming to you with sharing this message of this amazing book that we have the purpose driven life um as usual at the end of every day we we look back on our live broadcast and then we are trying really hard as well to try and edit these programs on a daily basis and we notice in between things going wrong that we would not really would have wanted like the network going off on us um sometimes we have to pick it up and pull it back so all kinds of things are going on but please bear with us because this is just technology and there's nothing we we will wish for it to be perfect but sometimes there's nothing you can do about technology it's just the way it is um and then with the editing as well because we are we're just under so much pressure editing this every day so sometimes things just get in between that we would normally not want it to be there so it's a pressure packed program we've taken on we have taken it on 40 days daily irrespective of whatever's going on otherwise in our lives so we just hope you understand with us what, what we're experiencing okay so today we're carrying on uh a great news as well here in the uk we have triggered what we call the article 50 which is where Britain is actually now beginning to put into progress exiting the European Union. So we know that's a lot of work for every citizen in this country and we, nobody knows what it's going to be like going forward. So it's just um, listening to the news today, I'm just hearing all kinds of things going for and going, those who are going for and those who are against. So it's just trying times i would say for all of us here in the uk at the moment so we just pray going with the book we've been reading that god is on our side and he's going to be with us and support us in all that we do okay um what i said yesterday was i was reminding everyone who's watching us live to please participate we want you to participate that's the whole idea of this program to get participation from everybody because what i've taken on is to read the book I decided to read the book and not just read it to myself but to share it with you so this sharing is what I want us to share with each other anything that you are experiencing based on what we've worked on so far please feel free to chat with us feel free to chat with us feel free to get involved feel free to tell us what you're thinking or what you're experiencing and I'll say a big thank you to all the people who are already participating on, on YouTube we're getting you know people making comments and thanking us for really taking on this inspiring journey and on Facebook we had quite a few people saying things to us as well and you know being grateful that this is happening um, from what we're reading here it's not my making it's just it probably has been written in my stars without me knowing it that this time will come in my life when I'll have to share something as amazing with with you as I'm doing so it's, it's, a, it's an exciting time for all of us and that means you too, it must have been written in your star that you are going to be part of this activity going on. So let's all enjoy it and make the best of it. Delving straight into chapter 8 which is day 8 and we want to know what the message is from this chapter. Um, so today is the 29th of March, uh, we are on chapter 8 and day 8. So, what are the messages from this particular chapter? So it starts by saying, oh, and by the way, you will notice there's a change in our, our sitting arrangement. Um, I just wanted something a bit different, so it's not boring. So I hope you like the new. But then this is my regular couch when I'm doing my um, usual chat on YouTube, chatting with my, my friends on YouTube. Okay, so you created this is chapter eight now he says the, the the title says plan for god's pleasure so all of us are planned here for god's pleasure and he says he created everything and it is for your this person is talking to god you created everything and it is for your pleasure that they exist and we are created so he's talking about us that all of us we are created for his pleasure and it's for his pleasure that we exist and it's for his pleasure that we're created. That just says a lot to me as well. 
And this is in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. And it says, The Lord takes pleasure in his people. And that's Psalms 149, verse 4. The Lord takes pleasure in his people. So he begins to explain it. He said, you were planned for God's pleasure. And um, before I actually go into that, the, this particular, I think the two, the next two chapters is focusing on the purpose. You remember when we did last chapter, he said he was going to delve into the purpose for us. And I think this is one of them where he says, he says purpose one. He said you were planned for God's pleasure. And that's what we're working on now. So you were planned for God's pleasure. The moment you were born into the world, God was there as an unseen witness smiling at your birth. So now think about this. Every time a child is born, God is there smiling and so excited because now that's another messenger that he sent to the world. Um, I was saying in the other last chapters that we are actually partners in God's creation. So that's what it is. The minute we are coming out into this new world to to the spirit being who we are when we arrive God is, God is so excited but yes that's a new person that's going to come and carry on my, my work you remember he said he said in one of the chapters that he flows through us in this part of his um, creation so we're planned for his creation and the moment we we're born into the world God has God was there as an unseen witness smiling at our birth God did not need to create us but he chose to create us now this is a big statement because you you i mean you know of so many uh, miscarriages you know of so many um abortions that happen sometimes you know of childhood um death so a child is just born and just dies so there's so many things that happens in the actual delivery of a child into the world and so anything could have happened any and so many things could have happened that could have stopped you being brought on this earth. And so when you look at all the various things that happen, it's not a mistake. But no, somehow we see true. And even when we go into biology, you, you hear that at the point where a, a man and a woman, you know, meet and make love to have a child or a child becomes a result, it says millions and millions of sperms are the ones that are traveling down to the ovaries in order to germinate that ovary. It could have happened on that trip. It may not have been you, it could have been the other sperm that didn't survive. You know, sometimes one is like triplets or twins, it's like two arriving at the same time. So it could have been anything that could have happened to stop us being here. But no, we went through all of that and we are here. So. The moment we were born, we were here for a reason. And God did not need to create us, but he chose to create us. He chose to let us go through. He chose to make us be the, the sperm that, you know, arrived and survived and went through that nine months of pregnancy and went through all the stages, the pains that the mother goes through and then the delivery stages and all that happens. We therefore exist for his benefits, for his glory, for his purpose and for his delight. So our being here is not for us. That's one big thing we need to really get out of this book. And that's the biggest thing I'm getting out of it too. Because the minute we keep worrying about us and us and us, you find that things don't happen the way we hope they should happen. But if we get the bigger message that it's for God's purpose, we'll find that things begin to light it, which is what is happening now that we are reading this book. So bringing enjoyment to God and living for his pleasure is the first purpose of our life. How do we bring enjoyment to God? How do we live for his purpose? When we fully understand this truth, we will never again have a problem with feelings of insignificance. So the truth we need to understand is bringing enjoyment to God and living for his purpose. Because that's the first, or for his pleasure, because that's the first purpose of our life. Remember, he's trying to tell us that he's breaking it now, breaking it down now to see, to tell us the reasons why we're here. And the first one was we're planned for God's pleasure. He said, when we fully understand this, we will never again have a problem with feelings of insignificance. And this proves our worth. Because the minute we know that we're actually here for God's pleasure, suddenly you feel useful. 
You feel worthy. You feel there's something amazing about you. You're no longer feeling insignificant. You're no longer feeling that like you don't belong. If we're that important to God and he considers us valuable enough to keep with him for eternity, what greater significance could we be looking for? Because if our biggest role is for God's pleasure and he's so excited about us being here and he wants us for his own purpose, his own pleasure, that is a big thing. That shows us that we're really worthy, that we have a reason for being here and that there's something amazing about us. So we're God's children and we bring pleasure to God like nothing else he has ever created. And this is why God never really gives up on us. Because he could have just said, you know what, this one's the one and listen, let me just leave them and carry on with the, with the flowers in the garden and the animals in the, in the forest and you know the trees. And He could have just ignored us. But we really do give God pleasure of all his creation. We are the greatest ones that gives him the best pleasures. You see, one of the greatest gifts God has given us is the ability to enjoy pleasure as well. So, while we are bringing pleasure to God, we are also allowed to have pleasure. We are also allowed to be happy people, to enjoy life. And he wired us with five senses and emotions so we can have experiences. So, every human that we are, we have senses. And God wired us with that. That sense of smell, that sense of taste, that sense of sight, that sense of hearing, that sense of feeling. All of these things are the things that God put in us. And it's happening because he put them there. God wants us to enjoy life and not just endure it. So, you know the first few chapters we talked about um, where we are having to go through so much and sometimes things may not happen the way we want them to happen and then um, we're not really meant to have it all because we then tend to forget that this is not a be all and end all and there's another home for us. But he also wants us to enjoy life and not just endure it. And this he did by giving us his five senses. And the reason we're able to enjoy pleasure is that God made us in his image. So remember here God is having pleasures himself from us being been there for him from us giving him joy giving him pleasure so because we were created in his image we are also expected to have pleasures I can notice that we're having little problems with the Facebook and the Instagram um, again apologies I remember we're coming live on Instagram and live on Facebook so you can always tune in and join the conversation we are God's children and we belong we bring pleasure to God like nothing else he has ever created. Um, so one of the greatest gifts God has given us is the ability to enjoy pleasure. We mentioned that and he wired us with five senses and emotions so we can have experiences. Um, for our YouTube friends, um, apologies for the breakup because um, we were struggling seriously to try and bring the um, live programs on, on you know, on on board but they are not really responding technology is really holding us down so that's why it may sound like i'm repeating myself but we just got a bit um, confused trying to make things work here so he wired us with five senses and emotions so we can have experiences and god wants us to enjoy life and not just to endure it so in the previous chapters we heard about how we're not meant to have it all here because this is not our home but then he's also saying to us that we're meant to have pleasure and why should we have pleasure? Because we are just like our creator. He was, he created us in his image and he gets pleasure from us. So that's a very important thing for us to take on board. The reason we're able to um, enjoy pleasure is that God made us in his image. He often, we often forget that God has emotions too. And this is what the Bible tells us. He feels things deeply too. The Bible confirms this. God grieves, God gets angry, God gets jealous, God feels compassion. God feels pity. God feels sorrow. He feels sympathy. He feels happiness. He feels gladness. Uh, he feels satisfaction and so many other emotions. God loves. God delights. God gets pleasure. God rejoices. God enjoys and God also loves. So when we know that all of that is happening, that's just how we are also meant to be. We are meant to also enjoy or, you know, 
struggle with some of these emotions but the big thing we also got from the previous chapters is we should never ever forget that this is not where it ends that there's a bigger place called eternity where all this goes and you know the more you look around you and hear people who have moved on or now i won't say move because when you say move it's like you just packed your things and you let one country to the other no people who have passed on they passed on from this realm of life to another realm of life which none of us know about because at this stage we are physically in this form and we don't know what the other form is but it just goes to show that nobody's going to remain in this form forever and so once we appreciate that once we appreciate that we're not going to remain in this form forever then we begin to see life from a different light and i think that's one of the biggest things i got from the previous chapter uh, because i started understanding that you know what whatever it is we're going through which is all the emotions that we've been having and getting wound up and letting things drag us down and wind us up and feel so angry about things it is not the end it's not the end it's just from what the book says it, by the time we leave this planet it becomes the beginning of a new one so it's just like a child is being born to this earth and we all rejoice. We don't know how it's going to be like when we pass on from here to the next one. It will just be the beginning of a new life. So we should think about all of that whenever we're making all these decisions that really are really emotionally heavy. Okay, see, so he explains for that to say bringing pleasure to God is called worship. So we're going slowly deeper and deeper into the whole thing. So the Bible says the Lord is pleased only with those who worship him and trust his love. So when we worship God and trust him to take care of us, God is really pleased with us. Remember we were talking about the various things that God feels and pleased is one of them. Anything we do that brings pleasure to God is an act of worship. Big message. Anything we do that makes God pleased with us is an act of worship and he explains that anthropologist notes that worship is a universal urge it's hardwired by God into the fibers of our being a natural need to connect with God so this is a very good one because it's not only I mean I think we go further down to explain that but it's not only when we sing and praise and clap hands and all of that that we are doing something that God is pleased with this is a natural urge in all of us to be closer to God. And this is so important for us Christians. We naturally want to be close to our Creator. We naturally want to feel His presence around us. Because we absolutely understand that we've been created by God for a very good reason. And we're here for a purpose. And so, most times when things are really beginning to go out of our understanding, we just know that there is a higher power that needs us. There's a higher power that wants us to come closer so he can hold us and put us in the right frame of mind. So there's this natural urge to worship God that's been hardwired into our fibers. It's a natural need to connect to God. He said, worship is as natural as eating or breathing. So we wake up every day breathing. So because the minute you start breathing, that's it, you moved on. And we eat every day, apart from when you go on, um, you know, you, 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 you decide, okay, I'm going to go on some kind of, I don't want to eat anymore. I want to just stop eating for a period because it's my way of getting closer to God. All kinds of things that we do. And we take on different things like um, during this period of Lent, my young son who loves uh, playing games, he decided for the period of Lent, I'm not going to play games. That's his sacrifice to God for the period. So we take on various things. Some of us don't eat for 40 days, not at the stretch, but we carry on until night, then we eat. So worship is as important as that, is as important as every day you wake up you eat for survival every day you wake up you're breathing for survival so we need worship because it's a necessary thing in our life too for survival and it says worship is as natural as eating or breathing and if we fail to worship god he we always find a substitute 
very important. So this is something we need to take note of because it then starts to show in what you find of value to yourself. Whatever you think is that thing that means a lot. That's why sometimes they say some people worship money. You hear some people worship their job. Some people worship education. Some people worship their husband. Some people worship their wife. Some people worship. So we tend to find something. Even in the Bible, remember when Moses was taking the children from Egypt in the wilderness. And when Moses went to, you know, went to God to come and to find out what God was expecting from them, the, you know, God was about to give him the rules and the laws and the things that they could survive on. And he was away from them for a period. What did I do while he was away? They came together and asked the next leader to please, you know, create for them some image for them to worship. And the next thing was that he asked them to bring all their gold and trinkets and all of that. And I watched a movie and it's so pathetic because suddenly Moses is now there. We're, we're looking now for another thing to look up to. So whatever you put your your trust in, your faith in, your believing, that becomes what you worship. And that's why it's so important that we worship God because the minute we don't do that, as humans, we will find another thing to latch onto that we can then think that this is where our hope is. So it says, depending on your religion, remember it says, if we fail to worship God, we we'll always find a substitute. So this substitute could be any of these things that we've just talked about. So depending on your religious background, you may need to expand your understanding of worship. And he explains it. You may consider church services with singing. That's a form of worship. With prayers. That's a form of worship. Listening to a sermon. That's a form of worship. And that's for us who are Christians. And then for others, you may think of ceremonies. So whatever ceremony this is, some people do it and call it worship. Some people burn candles and call it worship. Take communion and call it worship. You may think of healing as a form of worship. Miracles, ecstatic experiences. Worship is all of this and also a lifestyle. So it's so important that we take worship as part of our lifestyle because we need it. The more we worship God, the more pleasure he finds in us. So we need to take that on board. He goes further to explain, worship is more than music. And for most of us, worship is just a synonym, is just synonymous with music. Every part of a church service is an act of worship. So he's explaining to us now that every part of the, the service is an act of worship. Praying, which was what we just read earlier, praying, scripture reading, singing, confessions, silence, you know, silent moment, being still, not talking at all, but listening to yourself, listening to someone, taking notes where necessary, giving offering, baptism, communion, signing a commitment card like we did in the beginning of the book, greeting other worshipers, all of these things are forms of worship. So you shouldn't tie yourself and say, until we're singing a song, that's when we're worshiping. He says, Worship predates history, and he went a bit further into that. Worship also has nothing to do with the style or volume or speed of a song. So he went further to explain this, that sometimes some people, due to their natural preferences for something, think that music that is very loud is not good enough for worship. And some people think, until the music is very low and slow, that's when they are worshiping. That, that's not it. Worshiping predates his um, music. He said, worship has nothing to do with the style or volume or speed of a song. He said, God loves all kinds of worship because he invented it all. So remember in the earlier chapters where we said God flows through us. So by God flowing through us, we being his partners on this earth, everything that we are able to do here is God doing it. God doing it through us because we are the physical being here. We are spirits that are in human form. So anything that we are able to do is God actually doing it. So whenever you hear all these musicians singing all these amazing songs, I know most times we just automatically attach them to evil and we say, 
look at them, they've been possessed by evil. Whatever these possessions are, whatever the spirit that possesses them, remember God is flowing through all of us. And so, whatever that gift is that he's given you, that's the gift you're showing us here on this earth. So the gift of me sitting down here and able to chat with you is a gift that God has, God is flowing through me. And I've said to people most times, like sometimes when I come here and give, um, give some of the talks that I give, sometimes I don't even have any control of what I'm talking about. And most times when I'm done and I sit back to listen to it, I go, oh, wow, that's what I said. And I also li I listen to my advice all the time because most people think, oh, yeah, all she does is come there and just talk to us. And, and you know what that's saying about do as I do, not as I say. Or sometimes people say, do as I say, not as I do. I listen to myself because the advices that I come here to give are things that I learn from as well. So God is speaking through me in a different form as well. It's flowing through me. So we all need to acknowledge that fact that God flows through us at all points in time. And so... Every type of worship that we experience is God that's flowing through us because he created it. God loves all kinds of music because he invented it all. Fast, slow, loud, soft, old, new, etc. God loves it all. If it is offered to God in spirit and truth, it is an act of God worship. So whatever this song is, as long as it is offered in truth and with passion, that's what God wants to hear. So don't tie yourself to until it is slow music. He said there is no such thing as Christian music. There are only Christian lyrics. So that's a, a, an important thing. It's trying to, you know, kind of take us away from tying ourselves to a particular thing and thinking that's the only thing that is right. It is the words that make a song sacred, not the tune. So he goes further to explain, worship is not for your benefit. So again, he explained in some places in the book, saying some people when they go to church, <coughs> sorry, some people when they go to church and they come back and they say, um, I didn't really feel the service today. I didn't really get the tone of the worship today. I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. He says, that should not be what we do because the worship that we give to God is not necessarily for us, it's for God. So we worship for God, we worship for God's benefit. And when we worship our goal, our, when we worship our goal is to bring pleasure to God, not to ourselves. So when you go to church, go to church or whichever form that you worship, which is explained to us as many different ways of worshiping. Don't do it because, oh yeah, I'm going to get something amazing out of this. Do it because you're doing it to please your creator. He said, worship is not for us. It is for God. We don't worship to please ourselves. Our motive is to bring glory and pleasure to our creator. So our creator needs the glory. He needs the pleasure. And that's what we should be aiming for. In Isaiah 29, God complains about worship that is half-hearted and hypocritical. So every time we're trying to worship, we shouldn't be half-hearted about it. We shouldn't be hypocritical about it. He says, and he gives examples, stale prayers, prayers that are stale. I have no idea what a stale prayer is, but stale prayers, insincere praise. So when we are praising God and we're not being sincere about it, empty words, man-made rituals without thinking about the meaning. So all these things that we sit on our own and create for ourselves, and we're not thinking about it, God is not impressed with any of them. God's heart is moved by passion and commitment and not tradition in worship. So any kind of worship we give God should be sincere and honest. And anything that's half-hearted and not with passion and you know insincere and empty words, God knows us inside and he knows every cell in our body. So we need to be very patient and honest when we're working with God. He says, worship is not a part of life. It is our life. So we just read earlier where we're saying that we were born to worship and it's, it's hardwired into man to, to seek the creator. So he's reminding us that it is our life. Worship is our life. It's not a part of life. You see, worshiping is not just for church. It's not just for church service. 
uh, worship him continually and praise him from sunrise to sunset, telling us that we really mu must be talking to God every time, not just one day in church or one time when we feel like it, then we talk to God. He said, in the Bible, people praise God at work, at home, in battle, in jail, and even in bed. That's a very good one. Because every morning we wake up, we should be talking to God. As we're going to work, he explains it for that reason. But he's just reminding us that worship should be a part of us. It's us. He said, worship is our life. It's not just a part of us, but it's our life. Praise should be the first activity when we open our eyes in the morning and the last activity when we close our eyes at night. David said, I will thank the Lord at all times. My mouth will always praise him. And so this is in the Bible where David was saying that his role is just to keep thanking God because his mouth was made for that. And every activity can be transformed into an act of worship when we do it for the praise, for the glory, and for the pleasure of God. So every activity we're doing should be aimed at thanking God and praising God and giving him all the honor. Like this is one of them. So this is an activity that we have decided to take on. And yes, we might feel inconvenience for the, the, the extra work we put on, which yes, we have put on a lot of extra work. Because then I have to read it, I have to understand it. Then we have to set up all the electrical things and all the um, equipment and then all the, like we're dealing with this live program and then the main camera and the time. So all of these are just natural things that are out of the normal or the ordinary for us. But we have agreed to do it. And that's a form of worship. Because once you worship God with passion, I mean, I love doing this. I love sharing the message that I get with the rest of the world. I like, I like everybody being part of what I understand. So for me, it's exciting to share one thing that I know with the rest of the world. So it says every activity that we take on is an act of worship when we do it for the praise, for the glory, and for the pleasure of God. It says the Bible says, so whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So every time you do something, and I know we do this time, this thing most of the time haphazardly. Um, Cause I know like during Christmas when you've done that huge dinner for Christmas, or like we just had Mother's Day and we had a huge dinner as well, or maybe birthdays or whatever. And then I remember I said, oh, no, 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 we have to thank God for this meal and for everything he's put us through. But he said, no, not just occasions like that. It should be every time. Every time you're drinking water, you're drinking a drink, or you're having a meal, you're eating a sandwich, everything you're doing, we should be thanking God for it. We should be worshiping him. We should be praising him because we're here for his pleasure. And then Martin Luther King did say, he says a dairy maid, a dairy maid can milk cows to the glory of God. So someone who dairy, which is milk based, you milk the cow to create the milk. He says a dairy maid, someone whose job it is to milk the cow, can be milking the cow while praising God. That just pushes it really to extremes that whatever you're doing in your daily activity, everything you're doing, you should remember to keep worshiping God and thanking him for everything. So the Bible says, whatever we do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. So whatever you're doing, do it with all your heart and do it because you're doing it for God. And this will make even more sense because we know God flows through us. So everything we're doing, that is God flowing through us to do that thing. So it's about us um, accepting his presence in us. It's about us appreciating him in us. The message here, take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work. You're walking around life. Um, place it before God as an offering. So that's a big message today. Everything you're doing, just give it to God as the offering. That's, this is me, Lord. Take control. What becomes worship when you dedicate it to God and perform it with an awareness of his presence? So everything we're doing like now, I'm here sitting here, we're chatting about this. 
it becomes a worship when I dedicate it to God. So I've dedicated this to God to take control. And, um, and it's for his own, to further his kingdom that I'm sharing this message. So fall in love with God and Jesus. This means think about God constantly. While you're eating, while you're driving, while you're going to school, while you're attending classes, while you're running your business, or you're attending to clients, where you're waiting in line everywhere for anything, buying gas, talk to yourself about God and all the wonderful things he has done and can do for you. You see, all of this will help you get closer to God. Abide in love with God. This is what real worship is. It is about falling in love with Jesus and God. And so that's a big message here. He says, this was all about our purpose and purpose number one is worship. So purpose number one, we should learn to worship God in everything we do and thanking him. And he says, um, so we come down to where we ask ourselves the question. Remember at the end of every one, we ask a question. So the question is, what common tax could I start doing as if I were doing it directly for God? So that's the question. What common thing, what, what, what's this daily thing you do? Can you do and remind yourself constantly that you're doing it for God? You said you were planned for God's pleasure. Remember, you're bringing enjoyment to God, living for His pleasure. Living for His pleasure is the first purpose of your life. So that's a big message we're getting from this chapter. We should live for God's pleasure because He planned us for His pleasure. We did not choose to be here. He chose that we should be here. Out of all the things that could have happened and stopped us being here, He still did it that we should be here. So He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. He deserves our love because it is by Him that we're here. So I'll say thank you so much for keeping with us and being patient with us in all the initial difficulties that we're experiencing. Um, but we thank you so much again, and I pray God to continuous, to, I mean, to continuously guide us in everything we do and bless you abundantly, eternally. Thank you, and see you tomorrow for the next chapter.